We are Mr. Rhett Reichstadt, Mr. James Loomis, Ms. Gabrielle Hart, and Ms. Mary Dillon. We are the GMO Hunters, and we plan on seeking out GMOs and finding their secrets. We are doing this to inform ourselves, the public, and because this was assigned to us and we had little choice. We have journeyed to the dark corners of the internet and barely come back alive. We have been working hard throughout classes, weekends, and late into the night seeing the early morning light. This is our documentary, Welcome to the Land of GMOs. What is genetically modified? GMO stands for Genetically Modified Organisms. Genetically modified is containing genetic material that has been artificially altered so as to produce a desired characteristic. The DNA has been altered to improve it or correct it of defects. Basically, this means the organism, most likely a plant, is changed so that it is better or has something the original didn't. Some examples of GMOs are crops and plants like corn, soybeans, and sugarcane. 85% of corn in the U.S. has been genetically modified. There are also some everyday foods that have been genetically modified, such as strawberries, pineapples, sweet peppers, and bananas. Another example of a GMO is the turkey. The turkey has been genetically modified so that it grows larger in a shorter amount of time. This prevents the turkeys from flying off and makes them easier to catch. The turkeys are also able to produce more meat. The process of genetic mutation is kind of complex and is on a very small scale. The chromosomes, or the place where the DNA resides, that will be changed must first be located. Once this is done, the genes that need to be changed are moved from the chromosomes and replaced with genes from other plants or animals. The genes that are put in add certain characteristics in the plant or animal that improve it. Certain characteristics that are put in a plant could allow that plant to create its own pesticide or enable the crop to stay fresh for a longer amount of time. When it comes to the highly debated topic of GMOs, both pros and cons are brought up and closely examined. To begin with, we will start by stating and describing the pros. One very big part of why they may be considered good is that they usually grow much larger than the original plant or animal. In this case of plants, characteristics such as better insect resistance, weed tolerance, and staying fresher for a longer period of time is also very good. Depending on the climate and where the plants have are grown, other special mutations like cold tolerance and drought tolerance come in very handy. GMO plants can also help us with the field of medicine, with their ability to easily distribute some medicines. By putting them in GMO, potato or tomato, to other countries. Another way of which GMOs can help other countries is that they can provide food for areas that need it. Other things that can be added to them like nutrients and good taste. With these, there are also many possible environmental hazards. With these many pros, there are also some cons. One of, one of the larger cons is that it's still being tested, and there are some possible environmental hazards. The genetic, genetic modification could also, with genetic modification, it also reduces the effects of, effects of pesticides to keep the insects away. The, pro the crops could crossbreed as well, which would reduce the effectiveness of the modification. There are some health concerns, and people could be allergic to the genetically modified material. In fact, the number of allergic reactions is increasing. Some of the other cons are that organic food is healthier than the, gen than the genetically modified food. In the process of genetic mutation, the crop is, could get contaminated. The mutation itself could create a super weed with unknown consequences. Another large problem is it has no economical value. Another large question in the world of GMOs is whether or not they are safe. Over 60 countries beside the U.S. considered GMOs not to be safe. When it comes to the topic, there really is no clear answer as of yet to 
if they are safe. Some people say they are safe, while others disagree. In the past, multiple debates have occurred with no decisive conclusion. It can be very important to the public to know what is and what isn't genetically modified. 61 countries with over 40% of the world's population already label genetically engineered foods. Among these is the entire European Union and China. However, the United States has no official labeling laws on GMO products. California's failed Proposition 37 asked voters if they thought it necessary to have labels on all products containing genetically modified ingredients. The people opposing of the proposition mainly consisted of groups in the agribusiness, grocery industry, and biotech industry, many of whom would bear the expense of the new labeling policy. One concern was the potential loss of sales due to uninformed customers who did not know what the labels meant or whether or not they should be worried about them. If a person living in the U.S. wishes to eat a product that is officially declared GMO-free, the USDA Certified Organic Label is a label that is put on organic food products. An organic food item cannot be proclaimed as such if it contains genetically modified material. Therefore, items with the sticker are GMO-free. GMOs are genetically modified organisms that is containing of genetically modified material that has been altered to produce a desired characteristic in food and other products. They have not been proven safe or unsafe. Be that as it may, they see not in a long time environmental health advocate, the immediate director of Proposition 37 says, well, there is no conclusion evidence that GE foods are safe and unsafe. There also is no conclusive evidence that they are. Do you also do you know to outweigh the cons? That's, a, that's up to you. Signing off for the GMO hunters, this is Rhett, Jimmy, Gabby, and Mary.